don't you hate it when you take a picture and you think it's a great picture and then you come home, check it on your computer and you'd be like, hmm, that picture doesn't look so great. So in this episode, we're going to address it and we're going to edit a boring image into an interesting one. Let's go. And here we have the image that we're going to work with. I'm going to show you guys the original first and I'm going to move this slider to reveal the final result. So here we have a dull, uninteresting image. And some of you asked me to show the JPEGs as well and then show the final version. So I'm going to address that right now. And here we have a comparison side by side. So we've got the JPEG version over here, which is pretty flat. And then we've got the newly edited version over here, which is very lively. Now let's go to the duplicate manager because I've made a duplicate and I'm going to click this one and we're going to start with the orientation step. And the first thing I'm going to do, so I had the base curve on, but I'm going back to the orientation one. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the filmic RGB one. I'm going to activate it and, and some of you know that I used to bash on the filmic uh, module but I tried it out with a couple of different photos and I have to be honest it gives better results than before so for this image we're definitely going to put it in and it's instead of the base curve module so you have the base curve module but you can go back to orientation and then activate the filmic one because that's what we're going to do right now. And now it's activated and the image looks pretty dark, but you can change that by changing the white relative point or exposure around. Same goes for the black relative exposure. So if you move this to the right, you see that the blacks are starting to get crushed. And if you move it to the left, you see that it's starting to fade out and the image becomes more flat again. So what I want to do is I just want to uh, minimize it just a little bit. I'm going to keep everything as is, but Look what happened. It made the image a lot darker. So for that, I'm just going to drag this to the right a little bit just to make sure that it touches the side. And now the image is already a lot more bright. So that means we've used the exposure one, but I wanted to do another thing in this image. And I want to make sure that the emphasis is on this village and not so much on these flowers and definitely not on the sky. So in this case, we're going to the favorites module because that's where my exposure is. And obviously you guys probably won't have it there. So you can just search for it exposure. And then if you click this little symbol, you have the ability to change or to pick a new instance. And now we've got a new exposure module that we can use, which will be laid on top of this image. And for that, I'm going to use a mask and I'm going to use the gradient mask. And with the gradient mask, you have to make sure that the gray point will be the, on the side that will be affected in your image and the arrow will be on the side that won't be affected. So I want the sky to be affected. So I'm just going to place it here and I'm going to place another one. So I'm just going to click it previously. You just had to click control, but you don't anymore. I'm going to change this around because I don't want the middle part to be affected. So let me up that a little bit. There we go. And now I'm just going to bring the exposure down just to make sure that the attention will shift to the middle. And because of the halo that can occur or, you know, the harsh transition between what you're editing and what you haven't added, even though you can change this feathering, but just by simply holding the shift and then scrolling towards you or away from you, but you can also just move this down a little bit and just hit the radius, hit the blur. It's something I just do automatically just to make the transition a little bit more soft. So now that that's done, I want to add another exposure module because I want to brighten this area up. And for that, I'm going to use a brush and I'm going to use a brush that you can increase in size by scrolling towards you and away from you. And if you want the feathering to change, hit the shift, scroll it away from you. Or towards you in this case i want a fairly big amount of feathering so that it won't get any nasty halos and i'm just going to paint over this village in between the leaves i'm going to stop here there we go and now i'm going to click this symbol because i want to see what we're working on i'm going to increase the exposure and now we're brightening up the village but if you zoom in and you deactivate the module and you activate it again you see that the transition just doesn't feel very natural. 
And let's have a big thank you for the sponsor of this video, which is me. I've got a second channel called Gear Island. Please check it out. I'll link it somewhere up there. I'll put a link in the description down below. Now let's continue with the video. But you can change that by just whoop, whoop, changing the feathering, changing the blur. There we go. Move up again, deactivate it, activate it. And that's a lot better already. So let's zoom back out. And there's a couple of things I still want to do. So right now I want to use the color balance module because I want to add some contrast and some saturation. So I'm going to hit this button, contrast fulcrum. I'm just going to add a little bit of contrast, not too much. Don't overdo it. Just a little bit extra. There we go. And I want to change the output saturation as well to give it a little bit more color. But now if you look at this image, something isn't right. And in my opinion, what's not right is that everything is green and then this red stands out and it totally draws my eye towards it. But that's not what I want to do. So I'm going to use the color zones module. I'm going to activate it. I'm going to change the lightness. So I'm just going to hit the color picker, place it on the red. So I know that this is what I need to change. And if I move it up, you see that it becomes more light. And if I move it down, it becomes more dark and it automatically draws less attention to it. So I'm going to keep this as is because I think that looks pretty fine. And now I want to denoise the image and I want to do something about the chromatic aberrations. And for those of you that don't know what chromatic aberration is, it's like those purple or green fringes you see on the edges of stuff. So we might as well do that right now. So chromatic aberrations, activate it. There you go. You saw a slight color shift and I want to denoise the image as well. And I always use the profile one. There we go. And look at the trees. Look what's happening. So here's it deactivated. And now I've activated and it made the image a little bit more soft. So we're going to address that by using the high pass module. You guys saw me use that a couple of weeks ago or a couple of episodes ago in the no time wasted learning dark table tutorials. So we're just going to click the uniformly button, change the blend mode to soft light. And now let's see what happens if you move this slider, you see? So if you increase this, you see that the sharpening is being applied. And if you decrease it, it stays a little bit soft and I want it to be fairly there we go, maybe a little bit more. So let's zoom out and let's see a before and after. It's very subtle, but if you look closely, you will definitely tell the difference. Let's try again. So now everything is a little bit more soft and now it just got a little bit more detail. You can always crank this up just a little bit, just to make sure that you see it even better. And that's basically it. I mean, Let's have a look. So here's the snapshot that I've taken. It's probably a little bit different. Yeah, I made it pop even more. So here we have the new version and here we have the version that I did before. So I kind of like this even better. So let's deactivate the snapshot and let's take a new one. And then let's go to the orientation one snapshot one. So here's the original image that we started with and whoop. Here's the final result. Now let's compare it to the JPEG in the camera. Here we have a JPEG, which is fairly flat. And that's probably because I shoot in a standard picture profile. So the colors aren't lively or vivid or whatever you want to call it. But remember when you shoot in raw, the picture profile doesn't matter because you're always starting out with the raw image. So in my opinion, this speaks way more to the imagination than this does. And that's it for this week. I hope you guys like it. If you want to see more of me, please click uh, that playlist over there. And if you have subscribed already, you can do so by clicking uh, that button over there. And for this week, there's only one more thing left for me to say, which is make love to the like button. And until next time, doei! Nou, dat ging mooi rapido.